Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series International Exclusive Hoth, Han, and Leia. Now, after San Diego Comic-Con in Mexico and Canada, I think it was, Hasbro made appearances at London, Paris, and Italy, I believe. And instead of just selling the San Diego exclusive, they brought along this. But at the same time, I was going, how am I going to get that? Hasbro announced that they were going to put it on Hasbro Toy Shop, but then decided to distribute it, 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 it to distribute it through Entertainment Earth, which also trickled down to a bunch of other online websites. So I was happy, but at the same time, it's also kind of uh, more the same what we've gotten recently. Looking at the box, they go all out for their exclusives, especially the last couple of years. They just do big, elaborate packaging, which is cool, but at the same time, if you're at a convention, you have to get this damn thing home or you get it shipped to you. I got this box in the mail and I thought, what the hell did I order? And then remembered it was this. On the top, it's too big for my review space. Just look how deep it is. Those figures are just in the middle of all that empty space down there. Hello! Are there action figures in there? You can see the depth here. It's got kind of a ghost shot of Han and Leia. On the back, Lily's on the other side, kind of giving background to the scene that this is based on, even though Han's in the wrong costume. On the bottom, bunch of white again, UPC. And it took me a minute to realize this. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but this does open up on kind of back hinges and then you get a better shot of Han and Leia in there you get their weapons over here on the side but that's enough about the packaging I'm gonna attempt to get this open without tearing up too much that way maybe I can use the box as a diorama or something I'm not quite sure and that was easy enough just cut along the edges <laughs> of the outer box it slips off you get this inner tray and you can use this for a diorama I guess it looks okay if you get close enough to get you still have these slits, and you still have the corners, and you still have some cardboard looking parts, but you know what? You get the right lighting, you flip off some stuff, and yeah, you could you could get that to work. And then there are the figures, which <laughs> it's exciting because I, I'm such a Star Wars mark. I, I get anything and everything they put out, but it is a lot of reuse here, if not the exact same figure as I just reviewed a week ago. The sculpt on this is fantastic. The paints are kind of non-existent until you get up to the head, but it works for what was in the movie. When I think of washes and stuff, it's to simulate shadows at this smaller scale. But really, with the sculpt there, if you turn off some lights or put it in a normal display, it all, it's all going to pop out. But I did open that other layout a week ago, and it, it's the same figure. It's completely the same thing. In fact, if I laid these down or jumbled them up, oh... I wouldn't know which one was which. That's not a bad thing. I can always use some custom fodder. I'd, I've been thinking about trying to make a comic book Leia, so maybe I can take the vest off, change some parts out, whatever, get her to look like that, and then I still have my Hoth Leia. But man, the photo reel they're using on the faces, so good. At one point I was like, nope, I'm done with the Black Series for human characters. I'm just going imports. They brought me back around, and this is one of the biggest determining factors there. Yeah, the eyebrows usually turn out shiny, but the wetness to the eyes, the realistic look there, and then the, kind of the glossy lips, it just completely works. And it's even better in person. I don't know how I can reiterate that over and over and over. Yes, under the macro camera, you can see a little bit of fuzziness, you can see a little bit of pixels in person. You're not going to see that. It's beautiful. But then we get to the Han, and this one, yes, it is also reused, but it's been a long time since I've taken that Han and Tauntaun off the shelf and actually gazed at it. I like the parka sculpt. It has a texture to it all over to make it more interesting. Same thing for the pants. There's a cushiony pattern on the knees. There's some wrinkles. There's some wraps, but there's also a texture to it. The boots with the wraps, the gloves, the communicator over here on the left side. The separate belt that works completely. Now, when it comes down to it, I wish there was, like... Like with Leia and a lot of the Black Series figures, I wish there was a wash to here to bring out some of that detail to kind of kill the gloss, but it this also works under normal lighting in a display. We have this new soft goods piece up here around the neck. It kind of blends in. I like it right here. It took me a minute to figure out that they're trying to replicate the brown of the parka here. And looking at it like that, it looks like the hood is down. Now, this stitching seems a little bit large. It seems out of place with the overall costume, but that's what you get when you get to soft goods. It does like to ride up a little bit, get out of the way. I may end up tacking that down somehow. Glue, uh, blue tack, something, just to keep it in position like this. But that is removable, and 
that reveals, well, it doesn't reveal, you can see it with it on there, but you get a better look at the head here. And the head is reused from the Bespin Han we got recently, except the skin tone is a little bit lighter. I don't know, I may like it tan, but it also works with, you know, been hanging out on a Hoth planet, a snow planet for a little while. But we get the same face printing, the shiny eyebrows, the skin tone is dulled down a little bit. It looks a little bit more natural here, but the realistic eyes, the glossy lips, I love this damn technique. But you will notice the parka is brown compared to the original version of this. As you can see, same sculpt, everything except up at the head. But the first version with the Tauntaun is the blue parka. Now this has been going on for years. There's a big debate. And even though they've shown at Star Wars Celebration from Lucasfilm that the original parka was brown, in the movie, it appears to be blue. I don't know if it was a filter on the camera or the snow throwing off the eye, whatever. It just looks blue in the movie. And like most internet debates, there are people firmly planted on one side or the other. I can see the brown parka people being right because that's what it actually is in real life. But the blue parka people aren't wrong either. That's how it appears in the movie. It's like arguing how tall Bane and Batman is compared to the heights of Tom Hardy and Christian Bale. Me? I don't care. I like it. I want both of them brown blue i'm good with both let's put this back on just for accuracy's sake and when you put this back on it get, wants to get kerfuffled there you got to kind of work with it get the white back up under and then try to tuck it and there you go i remember han having his hood down in, during the movie but this is how i remember him hood up with the helmet on and then the goggles. So I kind of wish instead of complete 100% reuse except for this collar, they would have done another head with the face printing tech, the new sculpt, but with this hat on. And then this hood on the original figure is a separate piece. If you pop the head, you can just pull that off. I wish that had also been included with this release but painted brown to match this parka. You know, just more options, whatever. But they did paint Han's undershirt this time. So there's something. That's good. Articulation for Leia, I, like I said, and I'm gonna say a couple more times, I wish I hadn't looked at this figure a week ago. In case you did watch that other review, real quickly, the neck joint is the new neck joint with the dumbbell at the top of the neck, the ball joint down at the bottom, but it doesn't have as much range as some of the other figures we've seen this with recently. But you get tilt, and that's what matters. Arm out, around, elbow comes up past 90, gun blasting hand is up and down hinge, ball joint at the waist, good range of movement there, hip up, hip back, hip out, double knee comes all the way up, ankle back, ankle forward, forward facing pin. For Han, once again, let's pull this off just to get it out of the way. Even though it has the new photo reel, new sculpt head, it still uses that neck from the original Han, which is a hinge with a ball at the top. So it's a little bit limited. Good up and down, which we always got with the hinge, but no tilt. That's a shame. I felt something crack there. Hinge swivel at the shoulder comes up, swivels around. And even though the elbow has these big discs in the middle of it, it still comes up to just barely past 90. Swivel at the glove, no wrists. It's okay, I guess, but yeah. You don't know what you got till it's gone. Ball joint at the waist, good range. The lower parka is a soft material, gets up and out of the way. The right leg is a little bit hindered because the holster is strapped to the waist and then the down to the hair and then around the leg, but you can still get full range of movement. Double knee. All the way up, ankle back, ankle forward, forward facing pin. <laughs> for accessories for Leia, she's got the goggles from the single release. In fact, that was the single release. I didn't pick up the right ones. Exact same thing. Same thing goes for the fusion cutter. I, I believe this is called. And then she comes with that blaster that we've seen a couple times. For Han's accessories, besides this stylish damn fur collar thing hood, he also comes with a version of his blaster from Empire Strikes Back. Now this is different from the Bespin version. Same sculpt, but they put the silver tip on the end of it this time around. I'm not quite sure which one's accurate or which one's more accurate. I just know they look like Han's blaster. Here's Leia with several different versions of the Star Wars Black Series Leia. We have Boosh or Bausch or Bosch or whatever you want to say. Old Leia, Slave Leia, A New Hope Leia. And they've had kind of a problem of getting a consistent scale all the way across with Leia. A New Hope seems a little bit tall now compared to the Hoth Leia and the Bespin Escape Leia. I feel Slave Leia is too small. Boosh is too big. 
they need to stick with this one. I, I feel like this is the best one. Even though bringing around that Hoth Han from the Tauntaun release, he may be a little bit tall. But she looks great with the Hoth Luke from the Wampa set. And we don't have an import Leia yet. She should be out next month, I believe. But here she is with the SH Figure Arts Ray and Padme. Like I said, that Hoth Han sculpt may be a little bit tall because here he is with the first Black Series Han Solo, the Bespin Han Solo that came out earlier this year. Black Series Old Man Han from The Force Awakens and then Black Black series Han from Solo. So yeah, a little taller. It was always fudged with the original release because I always had him on the Tauntaun, so you can't really tell how tall he is. And here he is with the Black Series Hoth Luke from the Wampa set and the SH Figure Arts Han Solo with a custom casting cave head. And then as always, here they are with Gus. What can I say? You have some majestic fashion sense. Belly up to the bar with me and we'll talk about it. So at the end of the day, a neat little set that doesn't bring a lot to the table, really. Yeah, I dig Hoth Han, yeah, I dig Hoth Leia, and the diorama is even kind of cool. But Leia being just a straight re-release of a figure we're getting about the same time, it feels kind of rip off -ish. I hate to say that because I don't mind getting the same figure twice. I can use it for something else if I ever get around to customizing again. I really wanted to set for the Han Solo. I actually have no horse in the race when it comes to brown or blue parka. I just wanted both. They're different. It works. And I like the photo reel head. I don't even mind the furry soft goods collar. It's a good looking piece. In my display, the blue parka Han will still be up on the Tauntaun over to the side. And then here's my Hoth Han to stand on its own with the Hoth Leia and whoever else over on that side of the display. And I may use the diorama for this shot, but then I'll forget about it like I do most diorama stuff, and I may pull it out here in a year or two, so that wasn't a biggie for me. But $60 for the elaborate set for a total reuse figure and then a tweaked figure, it's... Mm, yeah, I don't know. If you skipped on the single Leia, if you missed out on the Han and Tauntaun, you get two characters that are needed for the shelf in iconic costumes. But if you did get the single release Leia and you don't care about the huge parka debate, then you're better off just keeping what you got. But remember, I'm happy with these. They're going in the display. I'm just not sure of how much of a big deal it is. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.